G. Diefenbaker High School presentation. My name is Tim Reitbauer, and I'm the learning leader of student services here at Diefenbaker. And I'm joined today by Mr. Wiley, one of our one of our wonderful counselors here at Diefenbaker. Hello. OK, as you can see, our presentation is going to start with that fantastic view of the main entrance to Diefenbaker and our lovely garden out in front there, where it's a nice reflective area for you to sit and reflect. So the first, so we're just going to advance to the first slide here, and I'm going to uh, basically just read this slide to you. Uh, the general high school overview, course load, semester-based instruction. So high school, a uh, high school uh, year is divided into two semesters, um, with the fall semester being from September to January, and then the second semester or winter semester being from February to June. Um, for the most part, you will have four courses per semester. And, and you will aim to graduate from Diefenbaker with a three-year course completion plan. Rarely, rarely, rarely do we have a four-year course completion plan. Um, for the most part, 95% of you are going to complete what you need to do here at Diefenbaker in three years and move on to something even greater. In those three years, at the end of those three years, you will be leaving Diefenbaker with either a diploma or a certificate of completion um, by the end of grade 12. Course pathways. Uh, course selections are as follows, usually a dash one, dash two, or sometimes a dash three selection. So um, the grade 10 level, like a 10 level um, course would be 10 dash one. It would also correspond with some electives as being the introductory level. Uh, grade 11 would be a 20 level or an intermediate and grade 12, a 30 level or advanced. And it is our expectation that you, for the most part, majority of our courses would require you to complete prerequisites before advancing to the next course. So for instance, if you were enrolled in Art 10, we would ask that you successfully complete Art 10 before moving on to Art 20 or Art 30. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Wiley for the next slide. OK, so in general, there are some uh, mandatory and then some optional high school requirements. Um, the first thing is that uh, all courses come with a certain amount of credits attached. So this will be a minimum of three and uh, up to a maximum of five. Some option courses might actually offer six credits in their full completion because they're modular and students will complete one module at a time for one credit, but the majority of courses offer five credits. Students need to have 100 credits total by the time they graduate in grade 12 to meet the um, high school graduation requirements. In, in part, uh, with respect to the mandatory courses, uh, the following list that you can see, the list below here, um, are the courses that students must have just to graduate. And that's different than um, being able to apply to post-secondary uh, universities or colleges. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, these are the courses that students must have just to meet graduation requirements. So you can see here they must have a 30 level English in the dash one or dash two, uh, 30 level social studies, again dash one or dash two, must have a math to a 20 level and must have a science to a 20 level. But again, uh, students should consider taking those courses to the 30 level uh, because 20 level math and science will not uh, help students get to most post-secondary programs. Uh, PE 10 is a grad requirement. It becomes an option after that. Uh, many students do consider taking phys ed right to the 30 level because it can also be applied to post-secondary studies. Uh, COM 20 is a three credit course that all students must take in order to graduate. And students must take a total of 10 credits or, or accrue a total of 10 credits in uh, Korean technology studies and or fine arts. And so most students, well, all students in grade 10 uh, will take three option courses. And so they should meet this requirement at the end of grade 10. However, students should consider taking CTS and or fine arts courses to grade 12 as well, because some of those can also be applied to post-secondary uh, applications, as it says at the bottom of this slide. Mr. Reitbauer. Just give me one moment while we attempt to advance to the next slide. Okay, high school graduation requirements. As you can see, there are a little grad cap at the top. 
Um, to meet graduation requirements, you must have English language arts to the grade 12 level, whether that be in dash one or dash two. So you need uh, grade 12 English, so 15 credits in total in English language arts to graduate. The same goes for social studies. You need social studies all the way to the grade 12 level in dash one or dash two for 15 credits. You need math to the grade 11 level for 10 credits. Now, most of our students do take a grade 12 math. This is the minimum for high school graduation. Um, you need a science to the grade 11 level. Again, most students do take multiple sciences or certainly science to the grade 12 level. This is, again, a minimum. You need three credits in COM 20. You need at least three credits in Phys Ed 10, but most of our students do earn the full five credits in Phys Ed 10, and then carry on to take Phys Ed 20 and 30 as uh, options at the 11, grade 11 and 12 level as uh, for a lot of faculties at university, um, Phys Ed 30 is an acceptable fifth sub subject for application. Um, you need a total of 10 credits in any of CTS, Fine Arts, Second Language, or Physical Education. So that's 10 credits in total, not 10 credits in each of those subject areas. You need an additional 30 level course for five credits. So got to have English, got to have social. Then you need a 30 level course course that's either an option. In some cases, Science 30 could be this 30 level course. Um, then you need another additional 30 level course, which could be math or could be an option. And then finally, you need a, another 24 uh, unspecified credits. In, in, and those can be made up of any of the courses we offer here at Diefenbaker to reach the magic number, number of 100 credits to achieve a Alberta High School diploma. Mr. Wiley. So in the diploma uh, pathway, uh, there are two streams. Uh, like Mr. Reitbar said, there is a certification pathway as well, but that is for knowledge and employability or KNE students. And if students fit into that pathway, they should have a discussion with their junior high teachers and counselors and um, uh, with the, f uh, the family should consider also contacting us and, and talking to us directly uh, because the planning is a little bit different. But the vast majority of students will enter into either the what is called the dash one pathway or the dash two pathway. And these are not uh, 100 percent accurate terms for each uh, core course, but we generally refer to them as dash one and dash two. So what's the difference? Well, the major difference would be what students can access with each path pathway uh, after they graduate. And so generally speaking, in the dash one pathway, if students complete courses to a 30 dash one level uh, in math, science, social and English, they have more opportunity to apply to universities, uh, colleges, pretty much uh, every post-secondary institution. Uh, the emphasis is on theoretical knowledge, and so this is where math, especially in science, become a little bit uh, more difficult, especially by the 30 level. Students also may consider taking a math uh, 31 or calculus course at that point. And like it says here, um, students who follow the dash one pathway are most likely to split their science from grade 10 from a general science to Spe uh, specialized sciences, the biochem physics, and then to take those again in grade 12. If students are attempting the dash two pathway um, and they graduate with 30 dash two level courses in their core courses, the general um, right of application is to places like some colleges, technical colleges, and even just uh, direct um, in, um, involvement in the workforce. Um, so the emphasis in these courses pathway uh, are on applied knowledge and generally speaking kids will take the general sciences or the general maths. Um, now in it says here at the bottom that uh, when students are planning for the grade 11 year they may start considering post-secondary planning and that is true. Um, at this time next year grade 10 students will start planning their grade 11 courses and they should do so with an eye on what they want to continue taking in grade 12, also with an eye on what they want to do after grade 12. And so that's an important thing to note. The grade 10 um, timetable is pretty much set with four core courses, three options, and phys ed. Uh, but beyond that, students really do have to start considering what they might like to do after school uh, to plan for grade 11 and 12. Mr. Reitbauer. 
Um, grade 9 to 10 core course selection. Grade 10 course placement is based on first semester report card marks, teacher recommendations, and planning for success. Note, placements can change by June, and planning beyond grade 10 is based on post-secondary interests. So, as you sit right now in your different courses, grade nines, you may have, let's just say, uh, two in um, humanities. And you may really, really want that dash one English at Diefenbaker when you're afraid that your recommendation would be for dash two. If you work really, really hard to improve your mark in grade nine English so that you have a three or perhaps a four, we would communicate with uh, your junior high school and we could work to, to change your schedule to enroll you in the dash ones. We could also, um, if your um, performance falls off a little bit, we could also work with your junior high schools to enroll you in the Dash 2. So it's really, really important that you keep working and work your hardest to have those great marks um, by the end of the semester so that we can enroll you in all the courses that you have interest in. Now, as has been mentioned before, just because you end up in a Dash 2 uh, course doesn't mean that you can't transition to a Dash 1 course. All it means is that we're going to ask you to cover a few more of the fundamentals before you progress onto that Dash 1 class. Mr. Wiley? So with that in mind and with planning for core courses and uh, sequencing throughout the three high school years, uh, we encourage students and parents to take some time to look through this document. Um, this chart, it's a flow chart that, that shows how students are able to move through both pathways, move through the sequencing. And um, this is important because for students looking to go to post-secondary institutions, um, they need to have more than just a passing grade in a 30 level course. So just obtaining credit in a 30 level course will often not be enough to gain acceptance into a program of choice in post-secondary. Often there are also competitive grade averages that uh, must be applied. So if a student coming from grade nine is struggling a little bit in one of the core courses right now, let's just say English um, as an example, starting in the Dash 2 English to build skills is not a bad idea, especially if the long-term goal is to move to a 30-1 to use that course in application to a post-secondary program. And this happens routinely and um, quite often in high school. So, so grade nine students should know that there is no stigma attached to starting in a dash two course, especially if you need to um, strengthen your skills a little bit to ensure that your grade 12 marks are as high as they can be. So coming into grade 10, uh, you'll see that first, or I guess the second column, which says the grade nine marks. Coming out of grade nine, if you have, in, in general, if you have marks that are mostly threes and fours in each of your core courses, you're going to follow that dash one pathway. Um, if you have scores that are twos and below, you're probably best suited to start in the dash two pathway, build some skills, and then decide whether or not you would like to uh, take the Dash 2 pathway right to grade 12 or work with your counselor to plan a transition to the Dash 1 pathway. Um, where it gets a little bit difficult sometimes is if students have uh, a mixture of twos and threes in their core courses and a discussion with your classroom teacher and or guidance counselor if you have one in the junior high would be worthwhile at that point. Um, but for now, uh, take some time, look through this chart, uh, Familiarize yourself with the different pathways and the different ways that you can move through the pathways and make a very well-informed decision about which core course you should select coming out of grade nine. Remembering that skill acquisition is most important, especially as you move towards grade 12. Mr. Reitbar. Bridging courses. So we have a few bridging courses at Diefenbaker, and I'll explain what we mean to you by that term. Um, for example, Math 15 is a bridging course. And um, basically, a Math 15 is for grade nine students whose math scores fall between a two and a three. For students who would benefit from curricular reinforcement prior to Math 10C enrollment, uh, it also works with a grade nine teacher recommendation. 
And finally, it counts as a core option course. So basically what would happen is we would enroll you in the Math 15 in the first semester of grade 10. And then depending on your success in that course, we would then look to enroll you in either Math 10C in second semester or possibly Math 10.3. So at that point, um, the Math 15 class takes the place of one of your options. So you would be choosing one fewer options um, than your peers. We also have a class called Learning Strategies, and traditionally it's been for IPP students, who, are especially those coded 54, who require extra time to complete assignments. However, um, you could certainly reach out to us, us or have a discussion with your uh, grade 9 teacher about the possibility of enrolling in this course and whether or not it would be good for you. Um, traditionally, it's a five credit course, although sometimes we have offered three credit um, um, options to this course. And it's basically a structured, um, supervised homework block where you can work on organizational strategies and study skills, as well as having um, the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a teacher who could help um, support your understanding of, of a specific concept or perhaps assignment or even uh, preparing you for a uh, unit final or something along that line. Again, learning strategy is a bridging course, so it does count as an option. So um, it would take the place of one of your other electives. Um, and it's, it's available in grade 10, 11, and 12. So you could take it for 15 credits. And learning strategies thir 35, or grade 12 learning strategies, does count as a graduation requirement. Mr. Wiley? Just pop one slide back here. Okay, so once you've selected your core courses, um, you will also be selecting your options. And um, like Mr. Wrightbar said, with the exception of a Math 15 or including a Math 15 or and or a uh, Learning Strats, you will select three uh, or you'll be given three uh, option courses. I believe the pick list has you rank your top four. Um, just in case uh, one of them is not available. However, for the most part, for grade 10s especially, we try to give you your top three selections in your um, in the option uh, part of your selection form. Um, and it's important to note that we do this so that in part, we're giving students what they've selected, but also because uh, it's how high schools build their overall timetable. So if students select options, they should be uh, they should expect to get them. And so as a former junior high teacher, I know that sometimes grade nine students will talk about options that they like with their friends and then try to plan to um, take them together and, uh, um, and then hope that they end up in the same class. But often the exact opposite happens, that grade nine students uh, take uh, options and uh, together with their friends and then they get split up because of the way that the timetable works. So. We're, what we're saying is take option classes that you absolutely want to complete um, and not just because you're going to get what you select most likely, but also because an area of interest in an option course uh, that you have can help you uh, right to the 30 level. So there are certain options that's in CTS and or fine arts that can be applied to post-secondary uh, applications. For example, many languages can be um, uh, taken right to the 30 level and then used as an application to post-secondary studies. Um, so it just says here on the slide as well that um, in, in terms of uh, how you get your option courses, it also depends on course availability. And so the reason we ask you to take uh, to pick four is just because in case we cannot offer students an option course because the, uh, the um, enrollment is too low, we want to have a fallback for you to, to have. But yes, you'll end up with three option courses um, in grade 10. And this is a sample grade 10 timetable. So this is kind of what it will look like uh, for your overall year when you join us. So as Mr. Uh, Reitbar said at the start of the presentation, there will be a fall semester and a winter semester. So your courses change at the end of January. You don't take your core courses all the way through um, grade 10 like you do in grade 9. Um, and so with that in mind, we try to balance your core courses out for you. So if your timetable uh, has more than two core 
classes in one semester, you should contact your guidance counselor in September and we can help balance that out for you. Um, Phys Ed, as we mentioned, is a mandatory course, so you'll have that. And then you'll have three options in the timetable. Now, one thing that you should note is so that some options are offered both, um, or sorry, some are option uh, offered inside the timetable and some are offered outside of the timetable. So what that means is that courses like band or leadership uh, will offer aspects of their course outside of the timetable. That means that happens before school, at lunch or after school. If you want one of those options, you still must take another option to replace the courses in your timetable. So you must have four courses each semester. Um, any option that you take that it falls outside of the timetable would come in addition to these. Uh, this is a general timetable for most Dash 1 and Dash 2 students. Uh, the only timetable that will look a little bit different will be for students who have applied to the IB program. Uh, you will have a little bit more uh, there'll be a little bit more of an expectation with respect to specific options and core courses, but that will be worked out with Ms. Sevier, our IB coordinator, once students have been um, uh, accepted into the program and received their acceptance letters. And I'll just turn it over to Ms. Wrightbar to finish. So I, as I look at our presentation here, I think we've come to the end of it. I just want to take a moment to thank all you guys for watching this video. And uh, we look forward um, post-COVID to seeing you all face-to-face -face in our building. And we look all forward to working with you for the next, you know, three to four years uh, on becoming great chiefs. Mr. Wiley? Yep, just looking forward to seeing everybody. And we're all really hopeful that we can get back to a normal routine in the fall. Thank you, and uh, again, we look forward to meeting you.